my name is Rahan Khan and I am a software engineer at uh, AppScot. So as you can see, uh, in today's webinar, we are going to demonstrate how to manage open source cluster in Kubernetes using kubedb. So let's start. So as you can see, our table of content, at first we are going to discuss what is open search, why you should use open search and some use cases of open search. Then we're going to show how to deploy open source cluster using kubedb, how to deploy and manage open source dashboards using kubedb. And after that, we're going to jump into uh, a demonstration on how to upgrade your open source cluster version using kubedb ops request. And finally, we're going to show a, a small demo on how to uh, perform custom branding with open source dashboard so what is open source open source is a suite of tools centered on a search engine demon also called open source it consists of a visualization and user interface open source dashboards also it is a hundred percent open source software and it's all released under the Apache license version 2.0. So with open search, one can easily ingest, secure, search, aggregate, view, and analyze data. People can benefit from having an open source product so that they can use, modify, as well as extend how they want to use. Common use cases of open search are application search, blog analytics, and more. On the top of all the all of that, open search is really full featured with supporting tons of plugins and tools that add production grade features to make it easy to use open source in applications. So let's see why you should use open source. Open source provides you open source SQL that lets you write queries in SQL let, uh, rather than the open source query domain specific language or DSL. If you are already familiar with SQL and you don't want to learn the query DSL, this feature is a great option. Uh, for KNN plugin, uh, which enables users to search for the K nearest neighbors to query point across an index of vectors, asynchronous searches to limit non admin users to specific actions. For example, uh, it may happen that you might want some users to only be able to submit or delete asynchronous searches while you might want to others to only view the results. Aggregations. Aggregations let you lap into open source powerful analytics engine to analyze the data and extract uh, statistics from it. There are three main types of aggregations, uh, metric aggregations, market aggregations, and pipeline aggregation. Metric aggregation basically calculates metrics such as sum, minimum, maximum, and average on numeric fields. With bucket aggregation, you can sort query results into groups based on some criteria. And with pipeline aggregations, you can pipe the output of one aggregation as an input to another. Now, open source uh, provides some visualization uh, uh, visualization functionalities with open source dashboards. Uh, with log ingestion, it you can uh, you can get a way to transform unstructured log data into structured data and ingest into open source. Structured log data allows you for improve for perform improved queries and filtering based on the data format when searching logs for an event. Open source dashboard also includes default map tiles, but if you need more specialized maps, you can configure open source dashboards to use a WMS map server. Open source dashboard includes grand chart visualization. Grand chart show the chart, so uh, the start, end, and duration of unique events in a sequence. Using grand charts, uh, you can uh, trace analytics, uh, telemetry, and anomaly detection use cases. Uh, where you want to understand interactions and dependencies between various events in a schedule. You can use open source dashboards 
to create PNG, PDF, and CSV reports as well from your results. And by default, Open Source dashboard uses the Open Source logo. But if you want to use custom branding elements such as Favicon main dashboard logo, you can also do so. So Open Source have uh, tons of uh, tools and plugins, as we have already said. Open Source has its own security plugin for authentication and access control. The plugin provides numerous features to help you secure your cluster. The cross cluster is application plugin lets you replicate indexes, mappings, and metadata from one open source cluster into another. Replication follows an active passive model where the follower index uh, pulls data from the leader or remote index. Then observability is a collection of plugins and applications that let you visualize data-driven events by using pipe processing language or PPL to explore, ex discover, and query data stored in your Elasticsearch cluster. And the uh, alerting feature, uh, it notifies when you uh, when your data from one or more open source indices meet certain conditions. For example, you might want to notify a Slack channel if your application logs more than five HTTP 503 errors in one hour. And anomaly detection in open source is any unusual behavior in chains in your time series data. Anomalies can provide valuable insights into your data. For example, for IT infrastructure data, an anomaly in the memory uses metric might help you uncover any early sign of a system failure. So let's see what's an open source cluster and how it functions. Open source can operate as a single node or multi-node cluster. Here is a five node cluster on the left that has uh, two dedicated master nodes, one dedicated ingest node, and two dedicated data nodes. Um, master node manages the overall operation of a cluster and keeps track of the cluster step. This includes creating and deleting indices, keeping track of the nodes that join and leave the cluster, checking the health of the each node in the cluster by running ping request and allocating the shards to nodes. Ingest node preprocesses data uh, before storing it in the cluster. It runs an ingest pipeline that transforms your data before adding it into an index. Data node stores and searches data. It performs all data related operations such as indexing, searching, aggregating on local shards. These are the working nodes for your cluster and they need more disk space than any other node type. So in order to create and deploy an open source cluster and open source dashboards according to your requirements, it's important to understand how node discovery and cluster formation work and what settings govern them. Assist, uh, assigning node types and uh, choosing the hardware for each node type depends on your use case. So, so deploying a cluster in Kubernetes space with all your required configurations could be, co could be complicated sometimes. So QTB comes into picture as a savior for you. QTB operator ensures your cluster is deployed with your required configuration in Kubernetes native web and it is secured by TLS. QB operator also makes sure that the open source dashboard is provisioned and it is configured with your cluster with secure connectivity. So if you want to install QDB, you can uh, visit QDB.com and you can very easily uh, install QDB using with uh, help jobs. Okay. So this is a custom resource for deploying open source cluster. And this cluster, this custom resource is called Elasticsearch. As you can see, like any other Kubernetes objects, uh, it has an API version, kind, metadata, and spec section. The API version is qtb.com slash v1 alpha 2. The kind is Elasticsearch. In the metadata section, you have to provide your custom resource name in this case, which is OS cluster, which refers to open source cluster. And we are going to deploy it in demo namespace. 
this spec section we recommend using in our SSL to true uh, uh, if you want to enable uh, HTTP at your enable you know, TLS at your HTTP layer. Uh, for this demo, we're going to deploy open source version 1.1.0. Our storage drive is durable. You can also set it to ephemeral if you want to. Uh, in the topology section, we have one master nodes, two data nodes, and three replicas for ingest nodes. As, as we are on Linode Kubernetes engine, we're going to use one of the default storage classes, that is Linode Block Storage. And we are requesting one gigs of storage for each of master data and infrastructure. So let's go to our workstation. Uh, as you can see, We are using Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes client version 1.22.4 and Kubernetes server function 1.22.7. One, uh, On our Kubernetes namespace, you can see that our KB ports are running uh, as we have already installed it. Uh, let's deploy the YML that we have just shown. So our custom resource has been created. Here we're going to watch our custom resource. So open source cluster is provisioning. These are the ports that have just been created by the custom resource. Let's wait for a while. The already master port is running. As you can see, when we have applied our custom resource OML, uh, keep the operator have created three services. The service which has a uh, which is named after the resource itself, which is the client service also have a master service and a governing service it has created some secrets as well as you can see the secret here it contains the authentication credential for your open source cluster and there are some other necessary secrets that have been created so all of our ports are running and our open source cluster is ready this version is open source 1.1.0 as you can see. So let's get back to our slide. So open source dashboards. Open source dashboard is a custom resource. Uh, that it's a custom resource definition that uh, enables you to deploy open source dashboard. Uh, and elastic search dashboard is just a uh, CRD here. Uh, its API version is dashboard.qdb.com slash Leon Alpha 1. Kind is as you can see Elasticsearch dashboard. The meta section we are providing a name for our uh, custom resource which is OS cluster dashboard. We're going to deploy it in demo namespace as well because it has to be noted that the open source dashboard must be in the same namespace where we have deployed the open source cluster itself. This X section we recommend to enable SSL uh, to set enable SSL to true if you want to enable TLS at your HTTP layer. The database reference field you have to provide the, uh, the, your cluster name or your database name in our case, which is OS cluster. Just deploy this OML.
So we have deployed our open source cluster dashboard. From here, you can see it have already provisioned, but it's still not ready. Some internal uh, stops are getting ready, but our pod is already running. It has created a client service. So now our open search cluster dashboard is ready. Now we can use this client service to port forward from our local machine and access to it. Let's port forward it. But in order to access our uh, open source dashboard, we need the open source authentication credentials. So we are going to create it by using the secret where it contains. So as you can see, the username for our cluster is admin and the default password is this. So we are going to jump to a browser here to our local host. As you can see, this warning has been shown as we are using self-signed certificates and it is not currently trusted in your browser. So we are going to proceed anyway. We're expecting a login screen. Yeah. So we are going to put our username and password for open source authentication. So we're going to copy this password from here and our username is admin type admin and paste the password here and try to log okay. so we have logged in so we're going to explore on our own so this is the home page of Open Search Dashboard. So we have successfully logged in to our Open Search Dashboard. Now you can view the app directory from here. You can see all the different functionalities that Open Source provides. But we're going to go to DevTools for now. We already have some predefined commands that we are going to show uh, in this demo. With this get request, we're going to see that, yes, we're going to see that our cluster version is 1.1.0. So we have successfully uh, deployed open source dashboard for the open source cluster that we have earlier deployed. Now we are going to try to put, uh, we're going to try to put, uh, uh, insert some data in Xcode index. We're going to insert some documents here. As you can see, we're going to insert this document using a put request. Okay. So as you can see, the result is created. Now, if we get from this index document, with the same ID where we have inserted our data, you're going to see it is found and it is right here. Does not change. Okay. Now let's assume that you want to update this document that we have just inserted in our F code index. So we're going to do it with a post request. We're going to uh, add stash to our document, which is another F code product. So let's make the request from here. Let's see if result is updated. Now if we try to get from our index, you can see it's right here. So our document is updated. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Now we can get back to a slide. Now we are going to see 
how you can update your open source cluster using QTP ops request. So QTP ops request is a or elastic search of request that we are going to use in this demo particularly it is a custom resource definition that enables you to uh, perform administrative administrative operations like uh, horizontal scaling vertical scaling or version upgrading uh, of your database or cluster in this case you can see that the ipa version for this resource is ops ops .com v1 alpha one the kind is elastic search ops request the metadata section you have to provide a name for your resource which is in our case os cluster upgrade the name is space we are going to deploy is demo the spec section you have to provide the type in this case we are upgrading the version so type is upgrade uh, the database reference section we are providing our database name the upgrade section we are going to provide the target function to which we are going to upgrade our open source cluster into which is open source version 1.2.2 so let's get back to our terminal and make this ops request We're going to apply this one. So from here you can see that the cluster update is progressing. One of the ports have restarted. One by one, all four ports uh, will be started and they will be uh, upgraded with the latest version that we have targeted to upgrade or cluster into Let's wait for a while while it's upgrading. As you can see our cluster and our dashboard both have gone to not ready state. Yeah. So in this node is already running after restart. The other three nodes will be consecutively running. Better we are expecting the data nodes to restart. Yeah, so you can see the OS cluster data zero port have already restarted. So it has restarted. Next, we are expecting this port to be restarted. For the upgrade operation. Yeah, so it's on. So three ports have already started with the upgraded version. Finally, we're expecting the master node to restart. Let's wait for a while. Okay, so it's have started terminating. Now it have restarted. Yes, so all four ports have restarted and all of them are in running state. As you can see, our version 
the spec is still open source 1.1.0 so we have to wait for a while so that it version is upgraded to 1.2.2 When the version will be upgraded to 1.2.2 and our open source cluster will be ready, the open source cluster dashboard will be started to reconfigure. We started reconfiguring and yeah. So the version has been upgraded as you can see, it's open source 1.2.2. Now let's wait until it gets ready. So it's ready and you can see that the dashboard port is terminating and the new dashboard port have started with the upgraded open source cluster. Below you can see that our Elasticsearch ops request is successful. Let's wait until our Dashboard is ready. Yes, so open source dashboard is ready now. So we can access to your open source dashboard. Okay, let's port forward again. Let's get back to our open source dashboard. We're going to reload. So you can see it's loading. So we are in the dashboard. So from the dev tools, if you try to make a get request, you can see that the version has been upgraded and it's now 1.2.2. Okay, now let's check if our data is persisting. So we have upgraded our open source cluster from 1.1.4 to 1.2.2. Now we are going to check if the data we have inserted earlier in F scored index is still persisting or not. Yeah, you can see it's right here. So the data will be persisting even if you upgrade your cluster to a latest version. So we don't need this data anymore, so we're going to delete our index as well. Okay, so it's acknowledged. Now if we try to make a get request, it'll throw an error. So let's put some more bulk data into our cluster. Uh, in this case, we are going to create a index called books. We are going to insert some documents with book names and price. Here we are going to insert three, uh, three documents in books index with ID number one, two, and three. And each of them will be containing a name and price for a book, as you can see here. So we're going to insert our first document which is created uh, interesting feature here that if you select two queries you can perform them at once yeah. here you can see both of them are created together okay so now let's from the side panel we're going to go to query workbench I'm going to show you how you can uh, use SQL to make queries on your data. So we have created an index which is called books. The, from the index we are going to at first query all uh, from the books to show everything. And later we're going to select only the book names, only the name fields from the books in business. Let's make a query. As you can see, here we have all the book names along with their corresponding prices. And from the second query, we have only the names of the books from our indices. You can also make PPL request to query on your data. So what we are going to do, we are going to get our data sorted according to their prices from 
the source index books and we are going to only show the only two fields name and price we're going to get only those two fields so let's run it see it's here the prices are sorted with their book names so that's how usually you can make queries in three different ways using open source dashboards so let's get back to our slide okay in elasticsearch dashboard custom resource you can uh, provide multiple customized options to deploy your open source dashboard here you can see the IPA version is the same uh, in the spec section you can provide your own authentication secret with the auth secret field if you want to set some custom configuration uh, into your open source dashboard uh, you can create a secret which could be named custom configuration you can provide the uh, secret name in the config secret field here uh, if you if you, if you want to provide your own service template you can also do that if you want to, if you want if you want to provide your own TLS certificate you can also do that and if you want to provide a pod template where you can specify the resource limits and uh, required CPU or memory you can um, you can do that easy and you can set the termination policy to do not terminate instead of wipe out if you want to uh, make sure that your uh, dashboard is not deleted accidentally okay so now what we're going to do uh, we're going to create a custom configuration secret for our elastic search dash uh, for our open search dashboard that we have just deployed and we're going to update our uh, open source dashboard with the custom configuration secret let's try it from our terminal so first we're going to see the first we're going to see the YML for the custom configuration we have said earlier in the when we are starting the webinar that uh, with open source dashboard you can perform custom branding on your open source dashboard so let's assume that for this demo uh, we want to uh, we want to replace the open source dashboard logo mark and favicon with our official kubedb logo so we can provide it in the branding.logo.default url branding.mark.default url and branding.fabcore url with the uh, with the address of the kubedb official logo and we also want our application title uh, which is currently now open search dashboard to be kubedb dashboards so let's apply the secret declare custom branding config secret which is created here as you can see and what we're going to do is we are going to copy this secret name from here we're going to our dashboard yml and in the spec section we're going to provide a config secret field where we're going to paste the secret that we have just created we're going to set this file and we're going to reapply our open source dashboard yml as you can see the open source cluster dashboard is configured the old pod is terminating and the new pod has been created yeah so now we're going to report forward We're going to jump into our open search dashboard. Yeah. So we're going to reload the home page. Let's see what happens. You can see here you have the kubedb official logo and it's written loading kubedb dashboards instead of open search dashboard. The favicon have been updated, the mark, the logos, all of them are kubedb logos, and the application name has been Convert it into kubedb dashboards as well 
So this is how easily you can manage, you can deploy and manage open search and open search dashboard uh, with QDB. And you can also provide your own custom configurations in QDB dashboard if you want to using custom configuration secrets. Uh, you can also upgrade your open source cluster along with the uh, open source dashboard using Elasticsearch of request uh, while persisting the data. And that's it. So for upcoming features, we have plans to add support for Elasticsearch 8. And we are also planning to add support for Kibana with search that plugin. So thank you for being with us for the whole webinar. Now, if we have any questions, you may ask. I think there are no questions. So Nazbun, you can take over from here. Thank you, Raka. With this, uh, we are concluding the webinar today. Thank you all for your lively, lively participation. The next webinar will be announced soon. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day.